Now let's talk about screen printing inks. The most common kind of ink is called Plastisol and it's actually the easiest to use as far as the screen printer is concerned and it'll actually hold a high amount of detail. So you can use it with a very fine mesh silk screen. The other nice thing about Plastisol is it's very opaque and you can get really bright colors especially when you're printing on dark shirts. If you're printing with more transparent ink, like a soft hand Plastisol, which I'll talk about in a minute, or if you're printing with water-based inks, it's harder to get vibrant colors on a dark shirt. And I think Plastisol kind of gets a bad rap because of the way that it's printed. And here's probably the worst example, and actually a really cool example at the same time. So. This shirt was printed with Plastisol, and this is a vintage shirt I picked up at a flea market. And it's just really thick and shiny print. Now, the nice thing about a shirt like this is if you find one, you can go and you can scan all the little cracks and turn those into textures and make your t-shirt designs look really cool if you're, if you're trying to go for a vintage look. But there's ways to do Plastisol where it's not quite so thick. Let me show you another vintage example. Now this one has the same cool looking cracks in it. And this is an old, I think an 80s Harley Davidson shirt. And this still has the cracks, but it, it's not quite as thick um, and not, definitely not as shiny as the other one. And then here's a modern shirt. Sometimes it's, it's just difficult to print on a black shirt because you have to put down what's called an underbase. Sometimes they also call it like a flash or a flash plate. And what's going on is they're adding just a white underbase under the whole graphic. So this graphic is a square. So the first thing they're gonna print is a big square of white ink. And then they'll, they'll flash that, meaning they'll actually heat cure the ink while it's still on the press and then they'll go and print on the other colors on top of that. Now that can sometimes lead to a really thick print because you've got the white ink and then you've got the other colors on top of that. Now this one's not too bad. So they did a pretty good job with this and after a couple washes, it'll probably feel pretty good. Let me show you another example. Now this is a really nice way to print Plastisol ink and we call this like, this, this one has a lot of air meaning you've got areas in the print where it just goes back to fabric color. And that's just a really good way to do prints. So if you can ever think of ways to print graphics and have the t-shirt color come through in areas, that'll help with the thickness. Now again, this one was printed on a white shirt, so it's actually pretty easy. They don't have to put down a lot of ink to make it look nice and and bright and vibrant. And just another example, this is a van shirt. It looks like they just did an orange stripe and then they overprinted the black photo. And this hardly has any hand at all. And I mentioned before soft hand Plastisol. And what soft hand Plastisol is an ink formulation that's just a lot softer than a regular Plastisol. Now it's not gonna be quite as opaque. And the other trick you can do is what's called a discharge mask instead of the flash plate or the, the white Plastisol underbase. So with a discharge underbase, what you're doing is you're taking the dye out of the shirt. Now this is what a discharge will look like because you're going down to the raw cotton. It's not 100% white. So you can combo up soft hand Plastisol with a discharge underbase, and that'll give you a pretty soft hand shirt um, that's really nice. And soft hand Plastisol is a little easier to use than water base. The thing about water base is you have to use a lower resolution screen. You have to use a, basically a coarser screen, so you're not gonna get quite the detail out of it. It will be very soft hand, but it's not gonna be quite as opaque as the Plastisol inks. And your screen printer will find it a little hard to work with. You can't really leave the water-based ink on the screen for very long before it's gonna actually dry on the screen. 
So there's a lot more problems with printing water-based ink and it has to do a lot with you know the temperature and the humidity and there's just a lot more headaches to deal with um, but you know if you can get a good water-based uh, print done and your screen printer doesn't mind and it and it looks nice I would say yeah go for that because you're gonna get a really nice soft feel to it